This man was convicted of murder and then ordered to be set free. But now he wants us to put him on trial again. Our investigation starts now. Good evening, I'm Liz Hayes, and this is Under Investigation. Twelve-year-old Leanne Holland was considered a free spirit, growing up in Queensland in the Ipswich working-class suburb of Goodna. The 1990s stretched ahead of her, but she'd never see them. On September the 23rd, 1991, she was killed. Two police trail bike riders found the girl's half-naked body. One of the most brutal murders the state had ever seen. The man convicted of this horrific crime, Graham Stafford. He joins us tonight. Did you kill Leanne Holland? No, I didn't. But can he convince our experts? The program today will investigate whether he is a cold-blooded murderer or whether he's the victim of a botched investigation and a flawed prosecution. Former judge with the New South Wales Supreme and Criminal Courts, Anthony Wheely KC, leads our studio panel tonight. Which includes forensic psychologist Sarah Yule, who'll be looking into the mind of the man police still consider a killer. There are several factors that are really important here and they indicate the different methods of inflicting those wounds um, and the particular level of, of physical brutality. But they also indicate that this person was prepared to spend some time, to invest some time in inflicting those wounds. Graham Stafford, why do you want to do this? Well, because it's in the public interest to know what exactly happened to Leanne. And I know in my heart that uh, I had nothing to do with it. But the conviction was quashed why is that Correct. not good enough? Because it's, it's, I'm basically in limbo, a living question mark, and that's not good enough for me. It never will be. I can confidently say there was not a scintilla of evidence that identifies any other person. Despite being freed on appeal after 15 years in jail, police have continued to relentlessly pursue Stafford. They properly instructed jury could again convict Graham Stafford for the Dan Holland murder. So tonight, we'll look at why police are still convinced Stafford is guilty. The police believe that Stafford took her bleeding body down the steps and then deposited her body into the boot of the Gemini will put their evidence under the microscope in the laboratories of Perth's Murdoch University. So we're just gonna pour a small amount of peroxide solution. With independent forensic specialists, James Spears and Bob Mead. The quality of the scene preservation at the initial investigation, the quality of the evidence that was collected, was it appropriate the way it was presented in court? There was a lot of evidence in the police investigation that certainly pointed the finger toward him as being the only suspect. Investigators don't come any more dogged than former New South Wales detective Damien Loon. A veteran of more than 60 homicide cases, tonight he will keenly scrutinise Graham Stafford's story. If it wasn't you who murdered Leanne Holland, who was it? I completely accept that he is somebody who should have been an initial suspect. Keeping an eye out for Graham Stafford is the man who finally got his murder conviction quashed. His lawyer, Joe Crowley. You're the lawyer. <laughs> this is your client. Is this a wise thing to be doing? I'm here at his behest and I'm, an, I'm up for this fight. I've, I've seen the evidence. 9.30 on the morning of Monday, September the 23rd, 1991. 
Leanne Holland leaves the house she shares with her father, Terry, her big sister, Melissa, and Melissa's live-in boyfriend, 28-year-old Graham Stafford. He's at home on a day off work, doing some repairs to his car when Leanne goes missing. Three days later, her body is found eight kilometres from her home. She was pretty badly assaulted around the head and, uh, and upper body region. She suffered dreadful injuries, but there are also unusual markings on her skin, suggesting she'd been tortured. From my experience, this is a very sadistic murder. The tracings on the body, on the back of the body and the inner thigh, were consistent as the autopsy revealed with some form of sadism. Uh, the wounding was horrific and the sheer violence of the hammer blows that would have killed her. And there were cigarette marks on the body as well. This is a very disturbing murder. Sarah, what kind of person does this? Well, it's the very rare behaviours. This is demonstrating evidence of sexual interest through penetration of the skin through sharp objects um, or sexual sadism, which means, you know, in, in uh, sexual excitement from the suffering of others. So somebody who has that interest, that's not a one-off behaviour. Graham Stafford. Well, you're right, it's a brutal murder. It's, it's um, sadistic and it's something that uh, is abhorrent and it's something that I've not sort of got any of those sort of tendencies. The breakthrough came late today with the man's arrest at Goodna. Graham Stafford was taken in for questioning even before police knew Leanne had been murdered. My mama told me before her body was found. Always be a good boy. A young mechanic with no criminal history, close to his family, liked and trusted by workmates. Nothing in his past seemed to suggest he was capable of a crime this horrific, but police were sure they had their man. It's common knowledge that Mr Stafford and Leanne were at home in the Goodner house on the day that she went to the shops and disappeared. He's the last person that um, Leanne had interaction with. He would be the first person that you would concentrate your investigation on. Sarah. Are these sorts of crimes committed by somebody known to the victim? That's a great question. Um, typically not. A, a sexual assault like this is, is typically, it, it may be planned by an offender or something that they are uh, building towards, but the victim choice is typically quite impulsive and it, most of the time, is that vic stranger victim offender relationship. If Stafford was the killer, the brutal and sadistic nature of the murder leaves Dr Sarah Yule somewhat puzzled. Well, there's a lack of criminal history, we knew that. There's also a lack of evidence of any kind of mental disorder, whether that be mood disorder, psychotic illness, anything else that may contribute to any kind of understanding um, of, of Graham as the offender. Coming up... Can we just start with the proposition that Leanne was killed in the bathroom? The police case. This is the uh, blood. And the forensic testing that could cast the final judgment on Graham Stafford's guilt. There was blood in the car. Tell us, why is there three spots of blood of Leanne in your car? Or innocence. You're saying it simply didn't happen according to the forensic evidence that, you have. That, that's correct. That's next on Under Investigation. Tonight, we're investigating the brutal murder of 12-year-old Leanne Holland in 1991. In our studio, Graham Stafford, the live-in boyfriend of Leanne's older sister, Melissa. Police still believe he killed Leanne, despite his conviction being quashed. He's prepared to have his case tested by our panel of experts. And forensic scientists, James Spears and Bob Mead from Perth's Murdoch University. 
who will examine the police evidence and theories. First, the case against Graham Stafford. Police claim Stafford killed Leanne Holland with a hammer in the family bathroom while she was dyeing her hair. And that in less than two hours, he cleaned the bathroom of what would have been enormous amounts of blood and carried her body down the front stairs of the house, placing it in the boot of his Holden Gemini. Then for the next two days, drove his car with her body in the boot until dumping her in bushland. A clear case, and according to police, all supported by a damning trail of evidence. Judge Wheely. Can we just start with the proposition that Leanne was killed in the bathroom? If she'd been killed in the bathroom, there would have been blood everywhere because of the number of blows inflicted with a hammer, which would have caused splashing all around the room, it would have been on the ceiling, it would have been in the floor tiles and probably under them and on the walls. And police suggested blood was found everywhere. And that there were a number of spots on the stairs leading to the blood. A video shows an officer swabbing all areas in the house, including the bathroom and Stafford's car. Each time indicating a possible trace of blood. It gives a positive result. So I just intend to uh, uh, run over uh, your statement here. During two police interviews, Graham Stafford is repeatedly questioned about their discovery. Well, this test indicated that there was blood in the house and it also indicated there was blood in the car. And what we've got here is a shower curtain. And if Stafford had bludgeoned his victim to death in the bathroom, Bob Mead and James Spears at Murdoch University agree enormous amounts of blood would have been splashed everywhere. The walls, the floor, the ceiling, and particularly the shower curtain. And this pattern is consistent. A standard forensic test shows the blood spatter pattern that should have been evident. So this should give us a very clear indication of what the pattern yes. should be. Yes. The test illustrates how far the blood will disperse, even though today only a small amount has been used. You can see with two hits how much pattern of blood you can get near to the side of the impact. So in a situation where somebody is being struck multiple times and there's going to be a larger amount of blood, you can imagine what the spatter would look like. Is there anything that you can add or you wish to say about uh, how that blood may have come there? Yeah. I don't know nothing about it. Were you rattled, Brett? I was rattled. I was rattled, yeah. I didn't know what day it was. I'm not sorry. I had to be honest, I'm just so confused. I had so many things running through my head that, uh, you know, I did get confused. Police, however, continue to insist they've found the crime scene. He looked shocked by the suggestion. He's denying that there was blood all over the house and the police are saying there was. I tested the uh, water in the bucket. A mop That's and bucket were used to clean up the house and there's blood in the bucket. That's what he was being told was the fact. But none of those things I've mentioned ultimately were the fact. In a remarkable turnaround, it will later be revealed the forensic swabs do not detect any blood at all although police will claim Stafford had cleaned up the crime scene. Based on what you saw in the evidence, a crime as so violent as this, the cleanup is hard to imagine yes. was achieved to yes. that degree. Not only does it have to be the cleanup of the bathroom, it needs to be the cleanup of Graham Stafford as well. And I would be extremely surprised if that was the case in an unplanned assault, a murder that's taken place. 
And despite their belief Stafford was the murderer, police did not find blood on his belongings. Damien? There was no DNA or blood on Graham Stafford's clothes or shoes? Yes, and you would have expected blood to be on his clothing. Even at the best behest of washing your clothing, even under the tread marks of the shoes, that we would have found something, but um, there was nothing found. But while the police tests failed to detect blood in the house, there were small drops of Leanne's blood found on the front steps. We test the inside of the boot lid. And three very small spots of her blood on items in the boot of Stafford's red Holden Gemini. The question must be asked and I'll ask you, Gray. Tell me, tell us, why is there three spots of blood of Leanne in your boot of your car? Well, I um, could easily try and come up with a scenario as to how that came about, but what would be the point of that? I, uh, I don't know how it came about and nothing's going to change that. I, um, I know that I'm aware that she uh, cut a foot some weeks before and um, used a, uh, a washcloth to um, go downstairs and show her dad, but as I say, I, I have no idea how it came to be there. Joe Crowley. That uh, is often the problem when you are innocent of a crime, you can't provide an explanation because you weren't there and didn't do it. So um, the fact that he said, you know, I don't know how that occurred um, is a perfectly legitimate response. Having murdered Leanne, the police case was that Stafford, in broad daylight, carried her body down the front stairs to the car. It was believed by the police as Stafford carried Leanne's bleeding body down from the house, down the steps here. He then deposited it into the boot of the Gemini. But there's a real problem with that particular explanation because the amount of blood that was found in the boot of the car was incredibly small. But to explain the lack of blood, the police theory was that Stafford sealed the body in a shower curtain that had been thrown away weeks before. He went maybe over to the bin here, and he may have extracted from the bin the old shower curtain, which used to be in the Holland's bathroom, but had been discarded some time before, and then wrapped her body in this shower curtain. A shower curtain which has never been found and all done in public view. This is the street here. And that's broad daylight. That's, that's in right. front of everybody. So he's and carried a, a body here. down. Yeah, in, in full view. Every scenario you look at doesn't add up. It always is two plus two equals five. I mean, you just have to go to the house at Alice Street and see how unlikely it would be for somebody to carry a body down the front stairs. It's one house in from a major intersection. Police then said Stafford left Leanne's body in the boot of his car for nearly two days while driving it around town, including to the shops, even a car wash. There was no decomposition matter in the car and the idea that Graham would go down to the car wash and have his car washed on that afternoon at about three o'clock with the body in the boot was inconceivable. Secondly, the next day he took Melissa I presume, and the father, down to the police station in the car to report Leanne missing. So he's got his car parked outside the police station with the body in it decomposing and shedding blood everywhere. That just seems to me to be totally unlikely. Sarah, to drive uh, with a body in the boot for a couple of days? Um, no, that, that's a highly unusual um, feature. Usually an offender's first instinct is to put as much distance as possible between them and the crime that they've just perpetrated. So we always say, you know, anything is possible, but it doesn't make sense in that respect. What is missing from the police case is a motive. It's something that concerns former New South Wales detective Damien Loon. Motive is not evidence, but motive leads to the what, where and when and why. And I find it difficult here to find motive in, on behalf of Mr Stafford's account. Well, I think I agree with Damien that, uh, um, for first of all, motive is not a necessary ingredient 
in a murder charge, but it's a very powerful uh, pointer uh, towards guilt. And where there is no motive, you need to slow down a little bit. Former Supreme Court Judge Anthony Wheely, who studied the case for our investigation, also failed to find evidence of a motive. I don't see in this case the slightest hint of any sexual interest by Graham towards Leanne. I don't see any animosity between them. I don't see any jealousy or other type of relationship difficulty. Graham, can I ask you about your relationship with Leanne? Leanne was just like um, having another little sister, basically a fun kid. She sort of probably had a little bit more um, leeway as far as being at her own devices at times, but uh, she uh, she was in trouble. Yeah, she was a good kid. The evidence was that Leanne had told her family she wanted to dye her hair that day. And it was implied by police that it was while she was doing that in the bathroom that Stafford had attacked her. I mean, the whole way they tried to frame this um, idea that uh, She'd somehow been dyeing her hair in the uh, bathroom, partially clothed, and suddenly I'm a monster attracted to her and attacked her. It was just ridiculous. But armed with their evidence, in 1992, police took their case to court. I know who you are. They produced for the jury videos of their tests and the many swabs they'd taken appearing to detect blood, but which the court was never told, were inaccurate. It took little more than three hours for the jury to be convinced Graham Stafford was guilty. On March the 25th, 1992, he was convicted of Leanne Holland's murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. Graham, tell me, your reaction to being found guilty? I don't think you can put it into words, Les. I was obviously shocked, um, numb, and I could hear a rum. Hear screams in the uh, in the back, sort of thing, um, from family and what. Within three hours, I, you know, my life was pretty much over. Coming up. The murder itself didn't happen in the bathroom. It didn't happen anywhere in the house. Graham Stafford is freed, but the police double down. There was not a scintilla of evidence that identifies any other person. As this case takes an extraordinary turn. What we had here was a report that was leaked so he could be crucified publicly in the media. That's next on Under Investigation. police are saying there was blood on a hammer. A hammer, that's what probably killed the girl. Tonight, we have experts in the studio. If it did happen, this is the effect it would have been on her hair. And in the forensic lab, investigating the murder of 12-year-old Queensland girl, Leanne Holland in 1991. Two teams working on both sides of the country. Their focus is on Graham Stafford the man convicted of the murder on March the 25th, 1992. I was obviously shocked, numb. Within three hours, I, you know, my life was pretty much over. Stafford was sentenced to life imprisonment. But four years later, the case was re-examined by Queensland senior forensic scientist, Leo Freeney, who delivered a bombshell. He dismantled the prosecution's case, beginning with the police claim that Leanne Holland was bludgeoned with a hammer in the bathroom. I just concluded that the hitting on the head, the murder itself, didn't happen in the bathroom. It didn't happen anywhere in the house, was my conclusion. And there was some blood around the place, but nothing like there should have been if um, she, she was hit on the head with a blunt instrument and had massive head injuries. Judge Wheelie. How important is his uh, evidence? 
Oh, absolutely important. I mean, ultimately, the convictions were quashed. Uh, and it was his evidence, essentially, what was absolutely pivotal to that. It took three appeals and 15 years in prison, but on Christmas Eve 2009, Graham Stafford's conviction was quashed by the Queensland Court of Appeal. This is the best news ever. But then, a year later, in 2010, the case took an extraordinary turn. In response to Stafford's conviction being quashed, the Queensland Police launched a review of their original investigation. The review was undertaken by some of the Queensland Police Service's most experienced detectives. They claimed to have found new evidence to reinforce their case and that cutting-edge scientific techniques had been used to re-examine the existing evidence, particularly in relation to the blood. And after two years, police said their results confirmed Stafford's guilt. There was not a scintilla of evidence that identifies any other person. It was a very public condemnation of Graham Stafford and a defiant reinforcement of the evidence rejected by the appeals court. The recommendation from that review was that um, Graham Stafford be retried. But the Director of Public Prosecutions decided Graham Stafford would not be retried. It was a surprising decision, but even more extraordinary to Judge Wheely was that police deemed their report, the one they so publicly announced, as confidential and refused to allow Stafford's lawyers to see it. Judge Wheely. Well, it's a may confidential begin. That may begin. review. <laughs> that may begin. This will be good. First of all, it's not, it's not the job of the police to make an announcement to say that somebody's been proved guilty because of a report that they have done. Look, I don't wish to be overly critical, but I would say it's disgraceful to put out a report with that sort of heading in it because it's not the job to do that and it smacks of sour grapes. Damien, from the police perspective, why would you keep a report like this confidential? I don't know, Liz, and that puzzles me. Um, I believe that Mr um, Stafford should have, his solicitors should have been um, given a copy for him to peruse. Fairly shocking, Joe. I, I completely agree. And what was most upsetting or sad about the review is that there was, when it was announced, they said they had new evidence which they wouldn't disclose and they wouldn't hand out the report. So, you know, they really um, seek to wound yet are afraid to strike, I think. Graham Stafford, you've been in prison for 15 years and your conviction is quashed, but a review, a confidential review is made which determines that you're really guilty, but you're not allowed to see it. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about that? It's, um, it's pretty unfair. It's, uh, it's not a just system, is it? Why, why am I not allowed to um, see the whole report so that I can um, you know, rebut claims that they're made? A police review that was kept secret for five years has been obtained by Seven News. In 2016, a copy of the top secret report was leaked to the media. For the past five years, this secret government report has held the answer. We have the police review. That's it there. What we had here was a report that was never shown to him, never shown to his lawyers, never shown to anyone, but somehow or other leaked so he could be crucified publicly in the media, which is what happened. There is significant incriminating and circumstantial evidence that you, Graham Stafford, murdered Leanne Holland on the 23rd of September 1991. I think the part that's difficult is that there's no testing of this review. Yes, and look, none of that evidence has been tested in a proper trial and in, in court proceedings, so we don't know how much of it is even valuable. You just can't tell, you know, and that's why I say it's not really for the police to say, we are now stating publicly that this man is guilty of the crime because of material we have here in a report which we're not going to show anyone. <laughs> that's not under any sense of, of fairness or justice, the way in which it should be done. That's why I, I have grave suspicions about this report. Coming up... The quality of the scene preservation at the initial investigation. For the first time, did that carry any weight for you? 
To me, no. An independent review of the police report. Is there a single piece of evidence that tells you Graham Stafford has a case to answer? That's next on Under Investigation. Tonight, in our investigation into the murder of 12-year-old schoolgirl Leanne Holland, we're examining the Queensland Police Review, which claims to comprehensively determine Graham Stafford is her murderer. A number of new pieces of forensic and other evidence were identified during the review, and these were strongly consistent with the initial police case. A properly instructed jury could again convict Graham Stafford for the Leanne Holland murder. Police refused to make the report public, but finally, by court order, it was released to Graham Stafford's lawyer, Joe Crowley. We took six years to get it. Once we get it, a whole lot of it is redacted. So, you know, they really um, seek to wound yet are afraid to strike, I think. The redactions by Queensland Police meant aspects of the review were kept secret. The critical details of the new evidence police claimed to have were not. Hair analysis, proof they believed that Leanne was dyeing her hair when she was killed. Blood and DNA testing, proof she was murdered in the bathroom. Body markings, proof she was transported in the boot of Stafford's car. Tonight, for the first time, we have the results of an independent scientific investigation of the yes, new evidence. Like Conducted by forensic specialists Bob Mead and James Spears at Murdoch University in Perth. Look at the quality of the scene preservation at the initial investigation, the quality of the evidence that was collected. After three months of tests, this is what Bob and James determined. The microscopic analysis of Leanne's hair claimed to reveal that while being bleached by peroxide, the process was inexplicably stopped. It's then police claim Leanne was attacked. Leanne Holland, or someone else, was in the process of spreading the peroxide through her hair when she was fatally assaulted. Subsequent investigation of the hair suggested that most of the paste that had been used had actually been washed out of her hair. So I don't think there was any real evidence to say that the bleaching had been interrupted. And it's drawing a very long blow to say that if it was interrupted, it was interrupted because she was attacked in the bathroom by Graham Stafford. I'm just gonna pour a small amount of peroxide solution. Lab tests, including mixing hair bleach with blood, which would have occurred during an attack, failed to support the police claim. As you can see, so now the foaming foam starting to foam is, reaction there is taking place. You're saying it simply didn't happen according to the forensic evidence that, you have. That, that's correct. The most damning claim in the police review related to DNA evidence. It said 50 spots of Leanne Holland's projected blood had been detected on the bathroom shower curtain. The blood, of which there were 50 spots on the blue outer side of the curtain, was confirmed as projected human blood. It was a claim seized upon by the media who'd been leaked a copy of the review. It was confirmed as projected human blood confirming it was her blood. But after analysing the evidence, Bob Mead and James Spears discovered the DNA claimed to have been found was so diluted, only one spot of blood was conclusively proven to be Leanne's and was more consistent with blood washed from a small cut in the shower. Our blood spattered test demonstrates why police should have found more blood if the bathroom was the crime scene. That's a whole lot more than 50 blood spots. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I think we have to emphasise that these spots that were on the curtain were, were minute. I mean, the amount of DNA that was present in the one spot that was analysed was very, very small. Um, 
It's what we call 100 picograms, which is just a tiny, tiny amount. And yet the other spots had even less DNA in them. So it's a very small amount of blood. It just doesn't hang together in terms of a vicious mm. attack on someone's skull with a heavy object many times over. The police review also claimed their photographs show impressions on Leanne's body matched the mat in the boot of Graham Stafford's car. The pattern on the Holden Gemini boot mat was identical to the pattern evident on Leanne Holland's left buttock. There were impressions of the car mat said to be on Leanne's body. Did that carry any weight for you? To me, no. Instead of relying on a reliable, independent impressions expert, they asked a forensic photographer to undertake the comparison. And if this was taken to court, it would not be accepted because they do not have the right skills to do that. In fact, Bob and James fear evidence could have been contaminated from the very beginning because proper crime scene procedures were not followed. None of those protocols were followed? None of those protocols were followed. And one of the most basic ones was the use of personal protection gear, gloves over shoes and a bodysuit. This was completely absent from any of the investigations and that compromised both the, the recovery of the evidence and potentially created an issue around contamination, particularly with trace evidence and blood. And Bob Mead is concerned the police investigation may have suffered because of tunnel vision or what is known as cognitive bias. So if there is forensic evidence that is pointing in a different direction, you tend to reject that or ignore it because it is not in line with the theory, such that you can end up painting what looks like a very convincing evidence of guilt, when really you've come up with a scenario that is a long way from the truth. At the end of their comprehensive analysis and testing, our independent forensic experts are scathing in their judgment of what Queensland Police claimed was new and conclusive evidence of Graham Stafford's guilt. In the police review, is there a single piece of evidence that tells you Graham Stafford has a case to answer? In a simple answer, no. Coming up... It's a horrific, abhorrent crime. Can there finally be answers for Graham Stafford? It's with me every day. And Leanne Holland. It's become less about her and more about me, which isn't really right. Somebody killed Leanne Holland and there's been nobody who's been convicted for it. That's next on Under Investigation. Tonight, we've undertaken a comprehensive investigation using the expertise of two teams. This is a very sadistic murder. Probing a case like few others in Australian policing. I have some concerns about the way this whole process was done. Not because the man jailed for a murder had his conviction quashed, but because of what investigators did next. A number of new pieces of forensic and other evidence were identified during the review. As we've explained, following the ruling of the courts, Queensland Police decided to review their evidence. After two years, costing thousands of taxpayer dollars and claiming to use the latest cutting edge scientific technology, police held a media conference to state their case was even more convincing, that Graham Stafford was guilty of Leanne Holland's murder. They properly instructed jury could again convict Graham Stafford for the Leanne Holland murder. He then deposited it into the boot of the Gemini. Our independent forensic experts, however, strongly disagree with the key scientific findings of the review. Every scenario you look at doesn't add up. In the police review, is there a single piece of evidence that tells you Graham Stafford has a case to answer? In a simple answer, no. 
So, what began as an investigation of Graham Stafford tonight has left our experts instead asking serious questions of the Queensland Police Service about their refusal to make their confidential review public. We have the police review. That's it there. And their failure to investigate how it was leaked to the media. What we had here was a report that was never shown to him, never shown to his lawyers, never shown to anyone, but somehow or other leaked to Channel 7. Leading our panel tonight, former Supreme Court Judge Anthony Wheely. I hope the viewing public who listen to us realise that it's always the onus on the prosecution to prove a case beyond reasonable doubt. And so it is too with this case against Graham Stafford. It's not for Graham Stafford to really explain how there were two or three mils of blood on one or two items or perhaps three in the car. That, that's not his job. The job is on the Crown to prove that an innocent man with a good record, with no blood on his clothes or shoes, who had a limited time to do this, was the man who killed this girl in such a brutal fashion. That's ultimately the responsibility. Former homicide detective Damien Loon and criminal psychologist Sarah Yule believe a new police investigation is needed. As a police officer who's investigated many terrible crimes, what would you be doing now? Because there is this unsolved crime. Well, exactly, and I think the determination should be, should go back to the unsolved homicide squad for an investigation, because the conviction has been quashed. The evidence that was put forward in the trial has subsequently been found not to be true or right. And I think it's for the benefit of Mr Stafford that have re-investigated. And I think, at least to be, to be fair, and I, I say, an advocate for a young lady that's been murdered, a 12-year-old who had everything for her life, I think we've got to be fair to everybody here. Sarah, the primary focus here is Leanne and that this case is not solved and there may be many benefits to that were it able to be re-evaluated in some way. Now, whether sufficient evidence was gathered to be able to um, progress it any further, it, I always feel positive or optimistic that there's never an end to it. If it is unsolved, there is potential uh, to find the true answers. But forensic experts Bob Mead and James Spears fear this is a case that may never be solved because of poor police crime scene procedures from the moment the investigation began. That's compromised both the recovery of the evidence and potentially created an issue around contamination, particularly with trace evidence and blood. It doesn't take us any closer to understanding who killed no, no, Holland. no, and we never will because of the poor procedures that yes. un were undertaken in the initial investigation. And that's the sad thing about this. Our panel believes the death of Leanne Holland should at the very least be the subject of a coronial inquiry. Joe, isn't there an obligation in Queensland to have a coronial inquiry into the death of Leanne Holland? Yeah, well, so this death is legally an unexplained death as nobody has been held responsible. Somebody uh, killed Leanne Holland um, and legally speaking, there's been nobody who's been um, uh, convicted for it. The benefit of coronial inquest in this case is it could look at, um, you know, both, you know, who, who possibly might be the killer, but it could also look at why the police investigation was so wrong in 91 and why it was it was compounded again in 2011. As for Graham Stafford, he is determined he should be set free of the whispers and finger pointing that he is a murderer. But worse, that he was the monster who took the life of a 12-year-old girl in a shocking and disturbing attack. Graham Stafford, I, I hate to put it to you this way, but we're made to believe that you're not guilty, but we're not sure if you're innocent. It's with me every day, and, and that's what drives me. It's impacted my life greatly. You know, I, uh, I have a, um, a wonderful partner, and I, I sort of think sometimes that maybe, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to risk that relationship by remaining so determined to uh, see this to the end. But um, she's just very understanding of it all and uh, knows that, you know, I've got to see it through to the end. And this is all about the terrible murder of a 12-year-old girl, somebody you did know. Somebody I cared for. She's, she's not to be forgotten in all of this. 
How do you feel exactly. about this? How do you feel about what's happened to her? Being told that I was responsible for it, being arrested for it, and then eventually being convicted for it. it um, it's become less about her and more about me, which, you know, isn't really right. It's not fair, but that's just the way that the narrative has gone. It's a horrific, abhorrent crime and it should be uh, resolved. It shouldn't be about me. Judge, uh, you've listened to Graham Stafford and, and everybody around the table. Should he be uh, allowed to find that peace that he's obviously seeking, that innocence that he's seeking, or and will he ever get it? Well, I certainly think he's a courageous man to be seeking it. We know it, that the conviction's been quashed, and I think probably most of us around here agree with that determination. But I think there are two tragic aspects of it. And the first is, uh, if I may address Graham and say, Graham, if you were to go to retrial and you were successful, it would really mean no more than that the Crown had not been able to prove the case against you beyond reasonable doubt. It would not be a finding of innocence courts don't make that finding. You might feel a little bit better as a consequence of it, but there would always be doubters. I know you're in limbo now, but I don't know that even going to retrial and being successful would take you out of that limbo. And that's, I think, a tragic aspect that you may have to live with for the rest of your life. And the second thing is, of course, that a trial would not tell us what happened to Leanne. It would not reveal who killed her. And that is another tragic aspect of the matter. Uh, I'd love to be as optimistic as Sarah on that point, but I'd, again, I think we're all going to be left in limbo as to who killed Leanne. It has been a most unusual response to an unsolved case by the Queensland Police. The failure to retry Graham Stafford and its decision to keep its taxpayer-funded review confidential that it so publicly claimed was damning of him. We've provided copies of our independent review of the police report to Queensland's Premier and Attorney General, and we'll keep you posted on their response. Of course, if someone has any information in relation to the horrific murder of 12-year-old Leanne Holland, please call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000 or contact us on our confidential email under investigation at nine.com.au. Thank you all so very much for joining us tonight. And I thank you. I'm Liz Hayes. Good night. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes and thank you for watching Under Investigation. Subscribe to our channel now for exclusive clips and don't miss out on full episodes of Under Investigation on Nine Now and the Nine Now app.